Super Curve Honing fans, Type 2 Diabetes Rescue by Keto fans, and Carnivore Eating fans. Uh, Bill here. I am going to do, it's been quite a while since I've done a honing video, and I'm going to do one. Usually mine are pretty long. Okay, we'll actually do a honing, and I'm not going to go through a whole thing, but I am going to uh, film parts and part steps. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to answer the question, okay? Uh, what is super curve honing? Now, uh, it is uh, a name that I thought uh, I would use because uh, when you say convex hones, people don't understand uh, a lot of times the difference between a hollowed out bevel and a convexed bevel. And, and there was some confusion there. So, so I thought I want to call it something different. And I call it super curve because it does... Uh, you know, when I started off, I was using a, a singular faceted dimension on my bevels based upon the curvature of my stones. And, and, uh, as I went along and developed, I found, found out, uh, more and more, learned more and more and, and came to the understanding that, that there are, are in the development of a hollow, in the manufacturer, in the development of a hollow uh, bevel or a hollowed out full hollowed straight razor even be uh, at the bevel there are multiple different size wheels that are used to create curvatures that are not a singular curvature that you could take a compass and come up with anyhow um, right before as I was preparing to make this um, uh, I noticed there was a comment on, on a recent YouTube thing that I came up with where somebody wanted to see information from antiquity because I had stated uh, that, that uh, the use of wheels, okay, wheels being what I use, wheels being a 12-foot wheel with a 6-foot cross crown and a 6-foot wheel with... Uh, I'm sorry, a 24 foot wheel with a six foot cross crown and a six foot wheel with a 24 foot cross crown. Okay, and I'll explain that in a minute. Anyhow, back to where this originated come from in, in antiquity. Uh, you can find me and you can find this stuff written. Okay, I, I have joined up over it uh, uh, and I'm not plugging uh, any particular shave for him, but uh, people, uh, somebody convinced me I should be at Badger and Blade because um, I practice this and there might be people interested in doing it. So this can be found. Uh, uh, translated courtesy of probably the, the individual who is most responsible for uh, and, and probably history will show that he will be the po person most responsible for a paradigm shift in straight razor sharpening to, to make this practice an acceptable practice. This goes back to, uh, I think the date on this was 1840. This does not show the date. I think it's 1846, maybe. Uh, I'd have to check that. But uh, it was found in a German grinder's handbook in Germany by, uh, I believe, uh, Jared Connerty, who is the modern day uh, reviver of this practice. It's a long, long story how it got there, but he is the guy who really started, started it. Okay, so, uh, uh, and then his name, I think it was his neighbor or his landlord who, who had family in Germany, when, and apparently there are, are old libraries and stuff where there are documents that are stored that didn't get bombed out by the Allies and found this. Uh, JPO, JPO uh, who is a practitioner in this as well as other razor sharpening styles, uh, had this translated, 
from German into English. Uh, there it is. It talks about the use of multiple curvatures. Does it talk about specific sizes? No, it doesn't. Because I'm not so sure specific size, whether it's, you know, you know, uh, 24 foot, as I say, or or whatever. It's, I'm not so sure it's the size. It's it's the idea that you are creating a hollow in the bevel. So uh, also, and I think the term from antiquity came 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 up. And I have an antique. Okay, uh, this is the. Uh, convex razor hone and strop and i've made a video on this uh this is uh ch -ch 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 -ch, where's the uh patented january 1843 okay and this is this has a curvature on so there's an example from antiquity for that that individual i'll tag him in so he can he can catch this here's here's the patent you can also find a print up of this uh, at the Badger and Blade where I am. You'll find uh, my screen name over there is Super Curve Max because I use Max Headroom as my avatar. I have done so for years. And and I just figured, well, let me tie it in because the only reason I'm here is because, is because I do what I call Super Curve Honing. So there's your antiquity. Uh, where did it come from? Okay, uh, as I, I said, that's kind of where it came from as it's developed in the modern days. Okay, the most significant modern day development was this, okay? Now, you don't need this, okay? I have shaped st stones by hand. You can hand shape stones, I'm sure. In 1850, 1846, 18, in the 1840s when they were doing that, they did not have a machined aluminum plate to put sandpaper on and rub stones on, that they would would largely do that uh, somewhat manually. Okay, so so uh, this, and I called this uh, after the, he doesn't call it this, I call it this. I called this the Jared plate because this was his invention. Okay, this is an aluminum machine plate, uh, CNC machine with a uh, compounded, curvature okay in this direction the curvature would be that of a 24 foot wheel roughly a 24 foot wheel and across being the curvature of a six foot wheel leaving uh uh you with a stone shape that 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 actually has an elliptical crown on that okay so I'm going to show some of my stuff that I do uh some of the hardware that I kind of use and then I'm gonna kind of go over to, uh, uh, I'm gonna cut out and then I'll go through some steps in honing. Okay, now let me see. Okay, so there we go. Okay, the, 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 the first thing in my arsenal was this right here. Okay, this is an Arkansas two-sided. Okay, you can see I dropped it, okay. Uh, but I've got more stuff since then that I use. I still use that both sides, okay. Uh, this right here is, uh, that's number, number two. That's the one I made manually. This, this one right here is number one. This, this, if I took this rock here, the curvature, the curvature in this direction matches the curvature across here. This is a mirror of this. So this, this, you know, there's a trans arc, you know, so I've got this stuff. I use these. Um, I occasionally, for different reasons, take these uh, 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 Nanoa Superstone Naguras to do different things, either rough up the edge. I actually also have a, uh, a codicle that was originally on the long, longer dimension of that, of that plate on the longer dimension this way. I changed this. This was my first, what I called super curved stone, where, where it's where it's going in this direction, the uh, like a six foot wheel. Uh, and the different stones, uh, you can see I got a couple of uh, rubbing stones in, in conicals. Uh, and this was something that after I made, okay, let's, let's, let me just talk about this one right here. This was one, and this does prove that, because the first one who I saw uh, manual shape a stone was JPO, who I mentioned earlier. He did it with a diamond plate that was used to sharpen uh, ice skates. And I was 
pretty much amazed at how quickly he had done that. Okay, so I got flexible diamond plates. I made a video of how I did this. This one here in this direction is uh, about a four foot wheel. So this is more curvy than this. So I can get like three dimensions in my bevel, okay? And, uh, and did, uh, okay, and then after I did this, uh, it was suggested using the diamond plate that, uh, the flexible diamond plate, that I take that flexible diamond plate and actually put it on here and make a mating uh, concave surface to use as a rubbing stone. And a translucent arc is very hard and that matches that in the curvature. And I use this to clean, okay, whatever stone. And, and if it is a, uh, a somewhat a stone that, that can wear such as this one right here, I use that to, to, to as kind of a leveling thing. I, I don't think uh, leveling or lapping. I don't think lapping is as, as critical on, uh, this type of honing that it is flat honing. Okay. And then the most recent, the most recent stuff are, I shaped up a couple of, uh, Nanawa, uh, uh not Nanawa, uh, Norton, uh, water stones. I got the single uh, grits because I wanted to work on some 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 gold dollars and some stuff with that. I have a set of, set of nano uh, super stones uh, that I loaned out and I thought eh, I want something that wears a little bit better. So so far what I've seen on this I like this. I'm very surprised on the 8K and how much and how fine that is uh, and what I see. And then here is here is an an, an inner string one that I just got. Okay. I, oh, I didn't just get it. I just shaped it. Okay. So this has the shape uh, of a 24 foot wheel this way, six foot wheel this way. And on the other side, the six foot wheel is this way. And the 24 foot wheel is this way. So that's, that's the stones. Let me look around, make sure I'm not missing anything on the stones. I'm not and oh, I am fitting the, the very most important part is the Nanawa, <laughs> Nanawa. This is Suhiro uh, 20K. And it took a long, long time to shape this. But this is, it's, I kept it flat on this side, this side, uh, it is shaped. And it's a really, really, I really love this uh, stone and I use, this to clean it all the time but this does and you can see uh, from my last work I haven't cleaned this off yet uh, it does collect a bit of swarf and a lot of times I'll use the the Nano and Niguras okay to go on there and clean that up because they have a little bit of an, an abrasive quality and th this is much much harder okay than those are I doubt I the, the time it took to shape this stone was almost the time it takes to shape uh, a hard arc. So, uh, okay, one more thing. Let's move along to, to uh, strops. I use a balsa. I finish with a balsa strop progression. There it is right there. It goes from Dovo Green, Dovo Red, Dovo Black. One and a half micron CBN, half micron CBN, quarter micron CBN. Uh, tenth micron CBN, and then I have a couple of uh, leather, including rue, and I do that on this magnetic base. And and I, um, I saw uh, where where recently Jared did a video where he was describing a technique where he pulls the razor as he pulls the razor across the stone. Okay, uh, uh, the bevel literally bends down. And, 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 and thins that bevel just a little bit more. I can't document that feel or that's what it's done, but it, it could very well be that that's what I'm doing here all the time because I go through this progression and, and I get a step and a pulling motion. Uh, and the next thing is, is, is what I use for inspection. Okay, I use a bunch of things for inspection. You know, I use these. This, this here is, 
one of the typical packing peanuts that I use. I made videos on on how I use that as a gauge for for sharpness. And and going through here, I can I can sense a difference. Okay, from here to up here on the abrasive that I'm using on here, and I'm looking for how much energy do I have to do for a push cut. So I got that, and I got my little sharpie, and you know a couple other glasses and that kind of stuff. I also I also uh, one thing I use a lot. If you're in the U.S., you can get this at Harbor Freight for about ten bucks. It's got a little light and a couple magnifiers on it, and and that's that's a handy tool to have. Uh, but the the and this is not something that you need, okay? But I did because I wanted it. I wanted a a I wanted a microscope, okay? I initially bought with the oculars, uh, ten by oculars. I changed that as you can see to a twenty by ocular, uh, a twenty ocular. This is a. Uh, true binocular microscope you can see underneath there. I should I should get this camera the right way. Underneath there, you can see that there are two lenses, so you can you're looking in from two sides, and you can get a three dimensional type thing. With the uh, with the objective on there, I have a two by objective as well as a four by objective, that against multiplied against the 20 by uh, ocular lenses, that gives me a, on this setup, that gives me 40 by and 80 by. It is nice to see, it's not necessary, but but it does help me. There are times that, that I wanna get in there and I wanna look, look kinda down on the edge of this this thing and see what it does. Uh, and then the problem was, it was hand holding that under that microscope. Oh, and I did get these these additional uh, LED lights to shine in, get a little bit more light in there. That helps. I do like it. Uh, the problem is, is that 80 by hand holding, which is the way I used to do that. It's like, how do you hold this? And uh, so I kind of made this little thing up with foam, and then that way I can kind of slide that around and look, and uh, uh, that works pretty good for me. Okay. Today uh, in honing, I am going to rehone uh, this tool right here. This is a 6.8 uh, Evide Sonant. Okay, a number of people have tried this with with what I call a super curve edge. Uh, you know, you know, if they didn't like it, they didn't say so. This is the real curvy one. This is the four foot wheel. Uh, so I do this, I may ultimately go back just to the stone itself, okay? But what I'm going to do is, and I'm just using a rocking motion from fingers over, and I'm going to do this. I don't think I'm going to have to do this much to uh, uh, get what I call, and this is what I call the back bevel, because I am working towards the back side of the bevel. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this a little bit, look at it, and I'll come back in if I make some sort of another change right there. I got like really, really close to the edge. Uh, I look in the scope uh, at 80 power, and I'm looking at it, and it's like I went almost right to the tip. You can kind of see where 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 there's still some existing uh, portion of, of the original uh uh, apex there, although, although, uh, that slurry could, this, this, this cracks a little bit as you, as I'm touching it, it kind of goes in a little bit, a little bit more to the toe than on the heel. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to the 20K, and this is one thing on this style, uh, that I have found, uh, helps me out is sometimes, um, uh, going back and forth on the curvature dimensions uh, is beneficial. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, go back and forth a couple of times. <clears throat> um, you could see a line in here. Uh, sometimes that line could be from 
some a kick up of something in because I am using usually to back bevel something a little bit more coarse so that could be a contact there in which will disappear you know these things you know will disappear before uh pretty quickly uh and uh uh what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to get try and get to where I look under the scope and and uh what I am seeing is a distinct difference between uh, what I see from the arc with the slurry, which is a frosted type of a finish on there to a, a, a more of a clean polish on the edge. Then I'm going to come back probably again with, with another uh, uh, type of back beveling with a less curvature uh, than that, that four foot wheel, probably go to six foot wheel. I don't know if I'll be using uh, exactly which one I'll be using. I got a couple in that shape, so. See you then. Hey, time is getting a little away from me here, a little bit more than I wanted to. Uh, I'm uh, going back and forth a little bit a couple of times between uh, the Aotoshi, which is supposed to be a 2000 grit on the uh, six foot wheel. And time on the Suhiro 20k um, this has been something that uh, in refining that I do uh, um, to understand a little bit about how the angle of the razor affects this if one would think that this is the curvature across like this, any angling you do this way moves you more towards uh, the edge in your cutting uh, in, a, uh, in a 90 degrees to the stone, you're as far back on the bevel. If you're, if you're coming across this way, you're as far back on the bevel as you can get with this and uh, any turning moves you a little bit forward and just the opposite happens here. When you're on here uh, at an angle uh, of 90 degrees, uh, you are as far away from the spine as much on the uh, uh, apex as you can get with this stone and any angling begins to uh, start your cutting, if your bevel is like this, it starts your cutting back into the bevel a little bit. And that's one of the uh, uh, artists and things you learn and how much how much movement to do in that. It's a little bit of practice. It's kind of fun to do. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of been going back and forth to try and get uh, uh, what I'm after. Okay, I'm just about done with... Uh, uh, this piece, I'm getting really, really close to where I like it. I've tried a lot of this, different things as, as I usually do. I'm really liking this uh, Aitoshi, uh 2000 on the on the longer curve. Uh, I've been going back and forth with uh, uh, with these these two stones, and uh, I'm 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 like what I look for is I look for I'm looking for. That's a little bit, you know, I have to make a little bit of a slicing type move to get to get the cut that I want. So I'm gonna go back and forth until I'm I'm kind of easily, I think the toe of this will uh, more easily push cut in there. So I got a little bit more work to do. I'm gonna go back and forth with, with, with uh, gentle, uh, Slight X strokes. You have to roll a little bit either. Any, any time. So I'm almost done. I'm almost ready to go to, to, to stropping a few more times at this until, until I get the kind of push cut I want on that packing peanut. And then, and then we're going to, uh, once I get that, I usually will go through the strops and, and I'm, I'm, I know that I'm usually pretty much done at that point. So, 
I'll check back in. I'll show you how I strop. And okay, I got, uh, I'm almost there with, with what I want to see. Um, getting a push cut that's really close on here where, uh, so, so I think I'm close enough on this to give this just a couple of few more, uh, freshen this up and just some more of those light strokes. And then I'll take just a couple of these dropping type strokes. And then I'm gonna uh, go to the drops. Uh, this is Dovo Green Paste. I think this is measured at three to five micron. Okay, th from the Dovo Green, that's a, a Chrome oxide, this is Dovo Red Iron Oxide. Here's another uh, type of uh, motion. I've, I've... So this one is a new one in, in my uh, progression. This is uh, a coarser grade of CBN. CBN really, really seems to cut fast, be smoother than the diamond stuff that I use, but it's expensive, you know, and if you want to know the stuff that I buy, the stuff that I like, this is, uh, uh, KME sharpeners. Okay. That's uh one and a half micron CBN emulsion. The performance is, is measurable. Okay. with uh with with that test um this is the final abrasive step this is uh 10 micron cbn uh the uh last two steps in uh my progression are uh this is a roost drop uh, uh, just this piece of rue. I, I like this. I bought rue hide. I haven't had the uh, success with it that I've had with this. This was, uh, you can get these at Chef's Times to go along with a mounting thing if you wanted to, if you're looking to go. And those kind of balsa blocks, you could get those there. Uh, I really like this, this particular rue. It has, it has, it is made for the paste and I, I haven't tried that. Okay. Because I just like the, uh, let's call, I, I think the term is a heavy draw, okay? And this is, this is the only step in my process where I get to actually be, be on flat. So if I've got curvatures in the bevel, at this point here, I am, I am actually addressing a little bit into the apex and for whatever for whatever give that 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 this thickness of of rue whatever give that is is where you'll get some flexing and maybe some uh actual uh convexing of the edge as opposed to concaving it's, you know i got these things from chef's knives ago this is a shiny type thing uh and it, it, and um it's a lower draw. It's fast. Let's see if I can get a a little a little sight on this here. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can get it on, but this is this is just 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 falling it just falling into that. And for those. That, that don't have any kind of a paddle strop or a bench strop or whatever. Uh, I usually suggest use uh, whatever strop you have, a hanging strop. Keep it, keep it pretty taut, and then and then use use a very light touch going across. 
this is a shape strop and and it does not take much uh you can feel this you're not it's it's pretty fast but it's enough i believe i do my maintenance work on this to to continue to pull that edge that edge is going to be like this and you're continuing to draw that out so that's uh that's that's the TI. I think this is this is pretty much ready to go. Okay, this is the last segment where I'm gonna close that on that. Uh, on on that TI, uh, when you look, um, even depend upon your glass. Okay, uh, one of these, which is cheap. This is supposed to be. This says this says uh, forty by twenty five millimeter. Nah, this is not a forty by. Uh, it's probably about a 10, but they are cheap enough. Uh, this is a little bit more of an expensive, uh, uh, jewelers type loop. Uh, this says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. let me look here. Okay. Uh, triplet. Uh, so, uh, this is a 20 by. Uh, and, uh, you can almost kind of see it. a lot has to do the, what I'm talking about is the concavity in the bevel, uh, or the hollowing of the bevel. It's, you can kind of see it sometimes where, where I'm kind of like on that, that, that curvature of the bevel where I'm like halfway in there with the different curves. Uh, my larger razor seven eighths and my one inch, uh, it's really, really clear where you really, really clearly see three. Three is not so much, uh, because some of those razors are, are thinner. Uh, uh, but I did say, I'm not going to hone, hone it. I just, the, the time, uh, today, uh, has just kind of disappeared. So even the time to, to really put this thing together and upload it, I don't even know when that's going to happen. But it had promised to open up one of these gold dollars. Uh, so, so this is, this is un, unseen, unhandled by me. They, they, they are coming in some nice packaging. I got, some, you know, I got some, <laughs> I got a couple of these things. I mean, it looked like they rick, rickshawed those uh, from China in on monsoon season. They were like wet and they were, they gotten wet and busted up boxes and, and rusty this this box came it was like all taped up real tight and all that kind of stuff no well, maybe it's because i bought so many of the razors so and and there's a there's a oil on here that you can you can feel and i think i took one of these and i wanted to see you know could i shave with it and could i use one of the strops that you you know if you buy a gold dollar and it comes with a strop and you know whatever could you could you shave with it and uh, I actually did. I actually, it was rough. It was rough. But they take these things and, and uh, I'm convinced when they, when they make these things. And I'm pretty convinced that all of these different ones, okay, the typical gold dollar has, uh, has the stabilizers uh, right in this area. And I'm, I'm pretty convinced because I've held these up next to, and I've looked at the blank form. I'm pretty convinced that it's the uh, the exact same razor blank. There's no difference in it. Uh, and even if you look at the ones that are fancy with a, uh, the curve and the stabby points on it, it almost looks like you could hold that up on top of this blank and you could fit it in there. So it's like, well, just how much do they grind away from it? Uh, and... Uh, this is this this has the newer. Let's see if it has a, anything, any stamping. There's uh, there's literally nothing stamped uh, on the shank. Okay, no gold dollar number, whatever. Uh, this one seems to be uh, have the shoulder ground ground well away. What I've found though sometimes is these. You know, if, depend upon how you. Uh, position on the stone sometimes these are pretty fat uh this one this one does not appear to be quite quite so fat right in here i'll i'll line it up with a with a ruler and see uh and you can see the 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 laser etching let's let's see what happens on this let's 
Let's see if uh, I get this in the light. It's it's a, it, it's definitely kind of an upscale look compared to uh, what they used to present. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's let's look at every one of these other ones that grind had a lopsided grind from one side. It's like the wheel. You know, they obviously don't have uh, the only uh, double wheel hexa type grinders that I know of are in Europe, either in France or or Germany. There may be some elsewhere. Uh, Ertan Schur may have moved his to Turkey for a little while or something. But, uh, you know, these things haven't been built in a hundred years. Uh, and those are the things where you take the razor and you can find the uh, the movies where the razor grinder and there's water running and there's a wheel and he's moving it in and out and he has a handheld thing to to control the pressure of the wheels. Uh, they obviously don't use that. I'm looking at this. This has on one side a little bit more, a little bit more of a bit of metal hanging out right there. Sometimes I've seen where that's a problem, where that kind of interferes. You get close to the edge of the hone, it it makes it want to kick up. Um, this distinctly has, it distinctly, I'm looking down this way, so let's let you look into this. This distinctly uh, leans this way, the way all of the other ones did, okay? Can you kind of see how that is? is bending way up that way, okay? And you can kind of see how uh, the difference is, you know, holding this straight up and down, okay? And this is just not how it's mounted in there. This is, I'm trying to get a backing on here that'll uh, uh, more clearly, clearly show show this but it is definitely and this is that doesn't really show it some of the cross lines on on uh this are are affecting it i don't know if that's a good illustration or not i'm <laughs> had seven minutes to this thing uh but i'm holding this straight up and down Okay, and I'm aiming into uh, the camera. I'm just gonna try and get this to focus. Okay, I'm looking at this from this end and what I am seeing, I'm seeing, and then I look looking at the camera and you can kind of see how this portion right here, which is where your hone is gonna hit, is higher on this side than it is on this side. Let's, let's see if we can focus, get a focus in on that a good shot of that. Can you kind of see how how low that is on this side and how much higher that is on this side? And that's 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 showing also partly kind of shows how how the why the grinding of it has a tendency to to lean to the one side. You can see this is almost this is, it's almost like they used a bigger wheel here than they used a bigger wheel. And they don't use two different wheels. They would have somebody and they would grind one side and they would grind the other. They might even do it with a belt type grinder. But you would think that if they had a belt, any kind of a grinder and you would position it against something as it was grinding, it would be the same from one side to the other. It's not. Uh, I, I'm thinking that most custom razor makers who would be probably using a belt, something like that in the grinding, they have a table where they would put that in and they would do that. So that makes these uh, an exceptional challenge to hone. And uh, you can see how, how different that is from one side to the other, okay? So uh, what that means is it means uh, to make the shave, I have to do a lot of material removal to do that. And I bought some, uh, you know, I think that's, that's why I bought the, uh, the series of Norton Superstones, not, not, 
the Norton Waterstones and the big ones. And I wanted to shape those. I figured I'd want to try that and because because I'll need to grind away at those. I actually bought some some diamond plates. I don't know how much I'm going to use that, but I'm I'm pretty intent on trying to figure out a quicker way because I'll take this and I can get this to shave. But I um, it, it's one of those. Things. It's a career. <laughs> <laughs> so uh i'm gonna go ahead and, and tuck this one back in that'll be my project if you get one of these and uh and it has not been honed and they come from me and they're like you know it's like it's like all oh, these scales these are the coolest colors i was gonna make i was gonna i got this and i actually have a couple of cases leather cases that i ordered uh at a uh reasonably nice price seven set cases where it's a zipper like thing you can open up i was going to make a couple of seven day sets okay uh you know that of these obviously i can't stamp the stamp the date on them but it's like okay so i gotta grind the bejeebers out of <laughs> seven razors you know it's like oh yeah that's 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 gonna take me a couple of months <laughs> If I could do one a day and take one day a weekend, <laughs> you work one razor for one every weekend. Uh, I, you know, I just don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's what we do. It's just like all this stuff that I've shown today and the stuff that we buy. It's for the fun of it. It's, it's for you to entertain yourself. I entertain myself this way, and and you know, fortunately, I, I receive the benefit of. Uh, uh, being able to provide uh, for myself a shave that 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 I like like a little bit better, but is, does that you know it's a hobby thing. Uh, if if it was not a hobby thing, I'd probably do like uh, now that I've learned <laughs> how to shave on uh, sharp steel, uh, lowest pressure, lightest touch, correct angle, stretch the skin. Now I've learned all that stuff. I could pick up any piece tool and I can get a good shave okay and I could have saved myself all this money you know on all these stones and all that kind of stuff you know um but it's it's for the fun of it uh it's it's certainly not as expensive as a hobby as you know when I had horses okay you know horses eat 18 hours a day and you know I had almost four of them I was part owner in one and it's like you know I did ride them I had had a great time horseback riding okay but it eventually just got to cost so much and they eat whether you use them or not <laughs> it was the most expensive hobby I've had in my entire life now I'm glad I didn't take up race boating uh, I did have a race boat. I, I mean, I did not, you know, I, I raced it in backyard in a backyard race, you know, one time it was fast. Um, but I'm glad I didn't take up that or some of the other stuff. Uh, but um, uh, shaving and sharpening raises is not not you could spend a lot of money, but probably not as much as I spend in other stuff. But uh, I hope everybody has uh, a great week. I don't know when I'll get this uploaded uh, sometime later later in the week. And I don't know what the total time on this is uh, until I put this all together. So thanks for tuning in. This is Bill out. Greetings, YouTube Shave fans, Super Curve Honing fans. Bill back again, if I've done my uh, work correctly. Uh, today is February 20th. Uh, I'm, if I do... Uh, what I plan correctly, oh, this will be at the end. This will be the test shave on a couple of razors that I uh, super curved recently on a description. Uh, prep the face a little bit with uh, Pro Rasso pre shave. I started off shaving with that, I really liked it. Stopped using it for a while, and uh, now I've gotten back to it. It just seems to be uh, very, very pleasant. Uh, the soap for today uh, is Sterling uh, Menthol Grapefruit. Um, Sterling usually does pretty, pretty good on uh, uh, citrus scents. This is probably, it's good. It's just probably 
not one of my favorite of their citrus scents. I seem to think I've looked at other grapefruit stuff that I liked a little bit better, but it, I mean, it's okay. It's, it's okay. So, uh, the first one is this gold monkey. Okay. That, uh, that I rehoned, uh, and both of these are off of the hones. They have, they have not been shaved, shaved with. So I don't know if you saw, you know, a couple of days of fuzz on there. Seems to be shaved pretty good. And secondly, Tears of Sard, 6 8 Vid Sonant, uh, black plastic scales. I always say how I love TI's pinning. I don't have. Don't have anything from them in wood, which to me is wood is the hardest to pin. Uh, I think all the ones I have from them are mostly horn. Actually, I do have a wood one. And it's the pin stays tight on that. So that's past one and number one. They're virtually equal. Uh, not the end result is virtually equal. The performance and the feel of the razor. There's, there's, to to me, there's definitely no question that I do like. Any of you have ever watched my channel for a while, you know how much I love the the French razors and the TRs of Sards and uh, the Razor Saber France razors I got. Whipped up the lather in the Sterling paddle bowl. If you've never bowl lathered or you've never had any success at it, you can get one of those. You can get them at pet stores. It's actually a doggy feeding bowl.
Sometimes it whips up lather where I almost have to go back for more soap because it's so aerated. I just think we can do more with the Tiara's Sard on super curb honing the, the steel. And and I, I do love this format. Many of you have heard me say this. I think I like this 6 8 format. I like the long and the reach better. I think I like it better than the 7 8 ones I have. That is one of those uh, times for me. It's as always that with fresh honing, you can you could if you wanted to get by with two passes. Things begin to get a little bit, just a little bit less efficient as you go on. I'm just finishing up. Everything on the TI. So that's when the tough one right there on the downside where where it's growing up.
Stop myself. <laughs> I thought I might have. I felt the, I was a little sloppy in there. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit of a fool's pass with the, uh, the gold, gold monkey. It's good. It's not as good as the TI, <laughs> which I don't expect. So that's top notch shave right there. Uh, whenever I transfer the razors, if you get a little cut like that, my, my wife, before she retired, she was into, uh, she was a micro in microbiology using Sterling, Sterling witch hazel orange chill, chill sticking with the, uh, citrus, citrusy, really nice, quite nice. Uh, but that's why uh, whatever shaving piece that I exchange, I always go into uh, Barberside with it. And on the, follow the instructions right on there. It's There's a dilution rate and it's like 10 minutes or something like that. And uh, it, it, you know, any, any type of pathogens it, that will kill. Uh, if you ever do use that stuff, be careful about where where you dump that. You don't want it will kill fish, so you don't want to get that in a place where there's fish. And uh, um, be careful about where you dump it. Okay, so the aftershave is matching uh, the grapefruit with menthol. Okay, this was the glacial menthol grapefruit. So uh, aftershave with with menthol. Seasoning shave. I do like the smell of the uh, aftershave better than the soap. So, so that's it. That's uh, the shave. It's quick. I may even uh, truncate it down a little bit. Uh, uh, both razors tested good for me. Uh, this is Bill. Uh, if I hope you have enjoyed uh, the information that I've put together on the concept of, and my practice of uh, uh, using uh, convex hones and multiple different curvatures to hollow out the bevel. And uh, it's a thing that I do for me. Uh, anybody who's interested in that, uh, uh, it's something to pursue. Uh, it's it's a proven it time and time again. I've talked about it time and time again. It's not the only way. Uh, it's what I like best. Though. So this is Bill. Thanks for tuning in. 
out. Bye.